Hey, Dazzles. Um, this is my third attempt at the video. First one, I had my headphones plugged in without the microphone near me, couldn't hear anything. Second attempt went for seven minutes. So we're gonna try and wrap this up. This is my review of Heat and Dust written in 1975 by Ruth Prawajuabla. Sorry for looking down, I've got my notes. I have a lot of notes. Okay, um, book is set on two, I guess, timelines. You've got uh, 1920s Olivia and um, her story being told and also her step-granddaughter, unnamed Anne, Hula, um, and her first person narration. So basically, Olivia lived in the 1920s in um, India and basically left her husband, ran off with a prince, the Nawab, and did not live happily ever after. Um, I guess two generations later, you've got the narrator, Anne, um, who finds out about this, um, you know, interesting character of her family's past, the family history, and she's really interested in knowing more and learning about Olivia's life. So she jets off to India to make the same mistakes, basically. Um, interesting parallel, but very sad. I think it's a perfect story of one person not learning from another person's mistake. Um, yeah. I think I'm just going to mainly focus on the characters here because that's what I've taken most in the book and I don't want to get to seven minutes again. Um, Olivia, I just feel like sad. What a lost soul. Um, you know, she had a husband who was nice enough, a bit neglectful, Douglas. Um, and, you know, she just had this like need to find more and find excitement and, you know, have more in her life. Um, and she meets the Nawab and he's this rich prince. Uh, somehow she finds him endearing and overlooks the fact that he is controlling and abusive, stupid, and basically a petulant child, which segue is shown by the way that he treats Harry, his trusty English sidekick, who's not really getting on that well in India, uh, just, just does not treat him well, treats him like a doormat. Um, Harry says plenty of times, oh, let me go back to England. I just need to visit my mum. She's old. Um, you know, I want to see my family. Just a little holiday. Nawab, okay, Harry, yeah, I've got your flight. Family's important. Go on. Off you go, Harry. And then the last minute, changes his mind. Oh, sorry, Harry. Um, I can't let you leave, you know. You're my friend. I need you around here. I can't have you going off to England. Guilt trips the poor man. I don't know if Harry can afford a plane ticket himself or not. I can't recall. I think not. Um, but just poor Harry. Um, he's probably my favourite character of the book based on lack of options. Um, but, you know, that's Harry. Um, then you've got modern day Anne, who... It's, I get the parallel, like it makes the story interesting, like the parallel between the lives. You know, it's, um, I think, you know, it says a lot about, um, you know, the, the choices that people make and why they do it. And, um, you know, I guess always searching for something more. But I think there's also something to be said for looking for something that actually is better and making those right choices. Uh, because after Olivia has an affair with the Nawab, she's on her husband, modern day Anne finds a husband, not her husband, somebody else's husband, and then has an affair with him. Um, both women out of these affairs get pregnant and both end up living alone, sad, on the side of a hill. What's that about? Don't know. Um... Really annoying. Um, I'm also going to mention something that um, Dizzles, I know you hate this too. Town X. Like, just give the town a name. You want it to be an anonymous town? I read the book. Lots of people have read the book. We don't care what the town's name is. Like, is it? I don't need to. I don't need a name for the town. I just need to know why the writer's like, oh, I'm going to call this town X. Can someone, anyone out there, comments below? 
if you're my one follower, Dazzles, comments. Um, because I really need an answer to that. Um, yeah, this book was a hard slog. I got like a third of the way through, 25% of the way through, and had to start again. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with the, um, like the Indian references, like Noir, Bagum, Sooty, Sooty. Um, it wasn't even until the end of the book, even after restarting it, that I found out that the Begum was the Nawab's mother. Whole book thought it was his wife. Um, but figured that out now. If I ever go back and read it, I'll know that. <sighs> Got a couple other notes. I had to write notes because I've forgotten. Um, of, I guess, you know, things that really stood out to me. And I'd like to start with the Nawab playing musical chairs. If that tells you something about the character, he played musical chairs. Grown ass man, musical chairs. Wasn't drunk. Um, secondly, Tessie and Beth. So that is the grandmother of a named current narrator, Anne, and her sister. And it says in the book, oh, you know, they never wanted to talk about Olivia. It wasn't until after Douglas died they wanted to talk about it. As a woman, you want to talk about that. That is gold quality material. Like, oh, husband's ex-wife ran off with a prince? Telling everyone. It's gold. So this whole, oh, they don't want to talk about it. Like, they didn't even know her. Like, why wouldn't... I don't, I don't see the big deal with that. Um, you know, everyone loves a scandal. And also, oh, okay. Indalao's wife, Ritu, can somebody explain to me, comments below, what was wrong with her? Why was she screaming and stuff? And they're putting rice on her? Um, if you know what that was about, tell me. I figured, like, maybe she had mental health problems. Maybe she had, like, a pain disorder. Um just a lot of questions you know yep um two two last things douglas trying to send um olivia off to Simla. like oh just go away for the summer go away for the summer you won't like the heat husband and wife don't just send her away for three months or whatever i would never do that it just that made no sense um, and also, finally, the whole point of Anne going to India in the first place is stupid. I don't think that in India she actually got any, like, solid, useful historical information about Olivia. I just think that she was, like, maybe in her head, oh, I will do the same as her and I'll meet a prince, but my prince will be better. You didn't. You met a married man and ended up living a sad life on a mountain. So the moral of the story, make good choices in life, smart choices and learn from other people's mistakes because you know, heat of romance, dust of its ashes. And that's it from me on that book. Sorry, it's a long video and I don't have like the, I don't have anything to make it shorter. Can't do that. Um, so sorry about that. Um, my next book, you'll be happy to know, it's maybe not part of the sibling book club reading at the same time, but I have just started Alice. So that will hopefully be my next review and then we can get back onto reading the same books. And sorry I've been so slow. I'll be less tardy in the future. Not tardy. Tardy. 